My name is Anna Babinets. Uh, I'm editor-in-chief of SWIFT24. It's an investigative agency based in Kiev. And I am also OCCRP editor in Ukraine. So this is our international work. And what we do, we usually investigate uh, big crimes, investigate corruption in Ukraine. Uh, but because of work, we switched a bit. And so now we cover war crimes. Uh, we analyze and identify uh, Russian soldiers, Russian army in Ukraine. Uh, this is our main work and we report from, um, from hot places, from bombing of Kiev and uh, other places in uh, Ukraine. It starts uh, at 5 o'clock, at 5 a.m. I was in house outside of Kiev at home of my boyfriend. I was with my uh, seven years old daughter there. Um, I woke up at five uh, because of noise uh, when bombing started. Um, and we went to the kitchen and uh, start to plan what we will do. What, what's happening, start to reading news. Um, and call to my uh, to my close people, call to relatives, uh, call to my co-workers, and we decided what we will do, and we set up uh, the meeting um, call and decided what we will do <clears throat> this day, what our plans, what our forecast, what we will do. So we started planning if we if we could plan at that moment. Uh, what everyone will do and what is uh, media is outlet we will do for next hours and next days. We realized that war started and uh, everyone thought about uh, personal plan and about plan for work. Right after bombing uh, started, I decided to take my daughter uh, from Kiev and we uh, left Kiev because we decided that it's dangerous to be there with a uh, kid. Uh, then all people from uh, our media decided about their safe place and how they can work. And then from first day and every day we have uh, a meeting in the morning without weekends, of course, because the war doesn't have weekends. Uh, we have every morning meeting and we plan this day what we can do, what we can produce. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, some of people, group of people still in Kiev and they cover the war, what happened, what, what happening in Kiev. Uh, and every day we plan what, where they should go uh, about every report, about every story. We try to figure out how dangerous is it and to what we can get in the end. And so we doing video reporting. We publish video stories on our YouTube channel. And we also publish text stories on our website, um, pictures, uh, photo reports. So everything which uh, news uh, media do, we are not news media. We try to, to cover everything we can, but uh, our main focus is um, documenting of war crimes. We want to show, we want to, to show how it looks like now because we know, we, have, we hope and we know that all things we collect now in these days now will be in international cards, in Ukrainian cards and Russians will be judged. And it's important what we report now, what, what's going on right now. So part of team analyze part of team work with personal information of Russian soldiers, uh, people from Russian army try to identify uh, what they do, where they come. One of our focus is Kadyrov people, people from Chechnya who came um, who came to Ukraine for because Putin told them to come. Uh, and we analyze who are the people from Kadyrov army, what they do, in what location, and we publish stories about that as well. And also we publish uh, reports from occupied city. 
uh, the our team, Ukrainian journalists, they try to find uh, people from occupied city. It's mostly in the south and east of Ukraine, uh, and uh, tell to, uh, talk to them, uh, ask what exactly Russians do there, um, how they behave as people, how they murder, how they rob, and we <coughs> we try to publish as most uh, as much details if we can obtain uh, as we can obtain as we can find for uh for the testimonies for collecting uh, all stuff for for the future for the future cards it's important for us i saw uh, many people in first days of war who were trying to leave uh, Kiev. Uh, it was very big traffic jams around all Ukraine. Uh, we were traveling. It was like very, very slow traffic. People left cars next to roads because there was problems with gas. Uh, and I saw military cars uh, when we were traveling and I saw some blog posts, military people. Um, yeah, and of course I heard uh, uh, like bombs and all these explosions uh, I heard in Kiev. There is a problem that Ukrainian journalists in general uh, haven't experienced to cover the war. Uh, because like maybe a few journalists in Ukraine who went to Iraq or Afghanistan or others, and mostly they don't work as journalists now. So mostly people, Ukrainian journalists who work and who covers the war, uh, it's first time for them. Uh, so they are not trained. Uh, they didn't have, many of them didn't have equipment for working. And we see, unfortunately, now some journalists from international media who were killed uh, during uh, this three weeks war. Um, so this is the biggest problem is that Ukrainian journalists are not experienced. Uh, before war started, uh, as you know, it was like about two months talking in international media and Ukrainian media that war can start. Uh, and uh, our partners from OCCRP pre prepared us pretty well. We bought everything for work, vests, helmets, uh, everything we need uh, to feel safe. Uh, uh, we had a few trainings from our colleagues from Bellingcat, how to work with uh, uh, information on social networks, uh, how to recognize people, how to identify people. And also, we had a medical training, so we were a bit prepared how to work. But it was, of course, a theoretical part. Uh, and when all this happened, uh, of course, we had to plan every day, every hour, if we're ready to work, if people from SLIS were ready to work. Fortunately, all of them, uh, all people who worked with SLIS before war, uh, work now with us from Kiev, from other places around Ukraine. Uh, and they work pretty hard. We work every day to cover everything. So our team, we have uh, absolutely complete, we have team like we had before war. Now even more people want to join to us, to help us like volunteers, take pictures, uh, making videos or help with everyday stuff because now we produce much, much more content than we produced before war. And we focus on everyday uh, stories to cover how it looks like now. We see Russian propaganda and it's very sad that Russians can't get like true information, real information in first days. They published uh, uh, sto in first days of war, we in Slistova published stories about, uh, um, about uh, people who, about Russians, Russian soldiers who were um, 
in jail in Ukraine, people who, Russians who came to Ukraine and uh, now they are in Ukraine and we published their stories. Uh, we uh, obtained videos, how they explain what they're doing there. And it was very, very popular in Russia in first days of war because we saw very big traffic to our website, to our YouTube. We even translated uh, some of that pieces to Russian because our media is Ukrainian. We publish stories in Ukrainian and we also have English page, English language page. So usually we translate uh, English and uh, originally in uh, Ukrainian. But uh, for some stories, we started to translate in Russian. And there are a lot of people who visited our website, YouTube channel to, to watch what uh, what Russian soldiers say and what's going on in Ukraine. But now we see that uh, Russia doesn't, uh, Russia limited the internet, uh, uh, access to a lot of uh, websites around the world and Ukraine. And that's why um, it's very hard to fight with Russian propaganda and it's not our focus now. Uh, but we understand that uh, in Russia, they show people only what Putin wants to show them. And uh, I don't think we can, we can fight with that only, no, I mean, like we as media. We just try to show how it looks like. We're showing video, we're showing people, people we name them. It's very hard to make uh, fake this stuff, but we understand that almost all news in Russia now, it's fake news. I had to take my seven years old daughter and uh, because I care about uh, being here in safe place. And uh, um, so now almost all days because school doesn't work, school don't work in Ukraine. Uh, so all days I'm with my daughter. I'm happy that I'm with her and she's in safe place. But um, I have to work like uh, 20 uh, 13 hours, uh, uh, 12, uh, 12, 13 hours per day, and I have to be a mom. Uh, but anyway, I'm happy that uh, she's with me. Um, they can care about her. Uh, about my personal life, uh, the dad of my daughter is in army now. We contact sometimes and uh, he's fine, but uh, he can see her daughter. I can see him. Um, of course, um, if, of course, it's hard uh, to be in different place, not with close people, not with people I love. Um, my boyfriend uh, is not with me. And uh, we, of course, I connect with all of people. My parents are not with me. Um, they're in different city in uh, in Ukraine. It, it's it's not safe city, so I can't connect. I can't see all my relatives and close people to me. Yes, it's hard because <laughs> because it's not uh, how my life looked like before war. But I connected with all the friends, with relatives, with my family. Uh, but now it's absolutely it's absolutely different life now. Now our the main goal to uh, to document to publish proofs of war crimes of Russia, because by now everyone understands that it's uh, Russian aggression that they came to Ukraine. But in the moment when it will be necessary to collect uh, proofs of that, it will be hard because people are emotional. They post some stuff on social networks and it, 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 uh, in the future, maybe it will not be possible to use them as proofs. And we as journalists, according to all journalism standards, to check all information, to ask to people with names, uh, you know, to show... Um, to show pictures and video, and we are collecting proofs of war crimes. It's the most important what we do now, because when it will finish, and I'm sure it will finish, and Ukraine will win, uh, how many victims of that war we will have, it's scary even to think about that. 
but in the end we will win and uh, Russia will be judged in all um, international cards and in Ukrainian cards and we need to um, we need to collect all these proofs as journalists, publish them, and it will be used for proving uh, crimes of Russians, and uh, they will, uh, I, I hope that uh, Russian militaries will, will go to jails, and Russia will pay Ukraine money for all destroying they doing now in my country. Uh, so our main goal to document, to show war crimes for using that our journalism in cards. Of course, it's hard and sometimes it's not possible, but we try to come as close to objective reporting as we can. Uh, before publishing, we check everything. Sometimes we are slow compared to news media, to news outlets, but we know that because our focus is different. We need to collect uh, strong enough proofs for showing and for using them in the future. Of course, uh, we try to inform people what's going on. This is our main goal as media, but uh, we try to focus on um, on proofs. Uh, it's hard to, to do fact-checking how we did it before war. We worked on stories for weeks because it's investigative journalism. Now we don't have weeks, sometimes we don't have days, we have hours for checking everything for and for publishing. Um, it's not easy to work in these conditions and to, you know, to collect everything. Sometimes we can't call to people or they you know, don't reply, but we try to do everything. And if we see that it's a weak story, we can't uh, find proofs. We just don't publish that because for us, uh, uh, very important uh, to inform people, but the most important to collect really, really strong proofs. That's why we focus on it. And it's not a good time for objective reporting, but we try to do everything we do we can do, and we try to do our best in this hard situation.